Hello Primary 4, so, so far we have read all the way up to chapter 14 of James and the Giant Peach and so many exciting things have happened so far. So far James has managed to escape from his horrible ant sponge and ant spiker and he's crawled inside this gigantic peach that they found inside the garden and inside the peach the walls have closed up and he can't get back out and he has met some friendly creatures inside that he's just started to get to know. At first he was really really afraid of them but now he would consider them as friends. We already know that all of the insects have got lots of different personalities and some are a bit bossier than others. So what we're going to do is we're going to read on from chapter 14. So chapter 14. We are off, someone was shouting. We're off at last. James woke up with a jump and looked about him. The creatures were all out of their hammocks and moving excitedly around the room. Suddenly, the floor gave a great heave as though, as, an, as though an earthquake was taking place. Here we go, shouted the old green grasshopper, hopping up and down with excitement. Hold on tight. What's happening? cried James, leaping out of his hammock. What's going on? The ladybird, was, who was obviously a kind and gentle creature, came over and stood beside him. In case you don't know it, she said, we are about to depart forever from the top of this ghastly hill that we've all been living on for so long. We are about to roll away inside this great big beautiful peach to a land of, 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 to a land of, of what? asked James. Never you mind, said the ladybird. But nothing could be worse than this desolate hilltop and those two repulsive ants of yours. Here, here, they all shouted, here, here. You may not have noticed it, the ladybird went on, but the whole garden, even before it reaches the steep edge of the hill, happens to be on a steep slope. And therefore, the only thing that's been stopping this peach from rolling away right from the beginning is the thick stem attaching it to the tree. Break the stem and off we go. Watch it, cried Miss Spider as the room gave another violent lurch. Here we go. Not quite, not quite. At this moment, continued the ladybird, our centipede, who has a pair of jaws as sharp as razors, is up there on top of the peach, nibbling away at the stem. In fact, he must be nearly through it, as you can tell from the way we're lurching about. Would you like me to take you under my wing so that you won't fall over when we start rolling? That's very kind of you, said James, but I think I'll be all right. Just then, the centipede stuck his grinning face through a hole in the ceiling and shouted, I've done it, we're off. We're off, the others cried, we're off. The journey begins, shouted the centipede. And who knows where it'll end, muttered the earthworm. If you have anything to do with it, it could only mean trouble. Nonsense, said the ladybird. We're now about to visit the most marvellous places and see the most wonderful things. Isn't that so, centipede? There is no knowing what we shall see, cried the centipede. We may see a said creature with 49 heads who lives in the des desolate snow. And whenever he catches a cold which he dreads, he has 49 noses to blow. We may see the venomous pink spotted scrunch who can chew up a man with one bite. It takes to eat five of them roasted for lunch and 18 for its supper at night. We may see a dragon and nobody knows that we won't see a unicorn there. We may see a terrible monster with toes growing out of the tufts of his hair. We may see the sweet little biddy bright hen, so playful, so kind and well bred. And such beautiful eggs, you just boil them and then they explode and they blow off your head. A new and a noceress, surely you'll see, and that ginormous and norable gnat, whose sting when it stings, you go in at the knee and comes out through the top of your hat. We may even get lost and be frozen by frost and we may, we may die in an earthquake or tremor. Or nastier still, we may even be tossed on the horns of a furious dilemma. But who cares? Let us go from this horrible hill. Let us roll, let us bowl, let us plunge. Let's get rolling and bowling and spinning until we're away from old spiker and sponge. One second later, slowly, almost gently, the great peach started to lean forward and steal into motion. The whole room began to tilt over and all the furniture went sliding across the floor and crashed against the far wall. So did James and the ladybird and the old green grasshopper and Miss Spider and the earthworm and also the centipede who'd just come slithering down the wall. So, 
James is finally off and the peach is rolling away from old uh, from Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker's house. I wonder where they're going to go. Chapter 15. Outside in the garden at that very moment, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker had just taken their places at the front gate, each of, with a bunch of tickets in their hand and the first stream of early morning sightseers were visible in the distance climbing up the hill to view the peach. We shall make a fortune today, Aunt Spiker was saying. Just look at all those people. I wonder what became of that horrid little boy of ours last night. He never did come back in, did he? Probably fell down in the dark and broke his leg, Aunt Spiker said. Or his neck, maybe, Aunt Sponger said. Just wait till I get my hands on him, Aunt Spiker said, waving her cane. He'll never want to stay out all night again by the time I finish with him. Good gracious me, what's that awful noise? Both women swung to, round to look. The noise, of course, had been caused by the giant peach crashing through the fence that surrounded it and now gathering speed every second. It came rolling across the garden towards the place where Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker were standing. They gaped, they screamed, they started to run, they panicked. They both got in each other's way. They began pushing and jostling and each one of them was thinking only about saving herself. Aunt Sponge tripped over a box that she brought along to keep the money in and fell flat on her face. Aunt Sponge immediately tripped over her. Aunt Spiker immediately tripped over Aunt Sponge and came down on top of her. They both lay on the ground, fighting and clawing and yelling and struggling frantically to get up again. But before they could do this, the mighty peach was up upon them. There was a crunch. There was a silence. The peach rolled on and behind it, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker lay ironed out upon the grass as flat and thin and lifeless as a couple of paper doll cuts out of a picture book.